Buddha said, all fear and anxiety come from a mind that's untamed. Todo miedo y ansiedad vienen de una mente que no ha sido domada. And he further said, y además dijo, there's nothing to fear no hay nada que temer except your untamed mind. A excepción de tu mente no domada. Whenever we have anxiety about things or worry, you know, it may be about things, but they primarily manifest because a mind is untamed, not in a good state. So if you transform, instead of trying to solve the cause of your worry, and anxiety, which you might not be able to do because there are a lot of things, but instead, if you knew how to transform the mind, then what happens? That the anxiety and fear is transformed. And thereby, even once your fear and anxiety is transformed, then you can tackle problems, difficulties, with more composure, with more wisdom, more insight. His own Dalai Lama often quotes, this is, his, this is the kind of a, a maxim he goes by. It was said by a great master, he said, if you can do something to solve a problem, then there is no need to worry about it. But if you cannot do anything to solve a problem, it doesn't help to worry about it either. In both cases, worry is extra. Unnecessary worry. In Tibetan we call it, the worry is semne mind sickness. Instead of worry, instead of worry, is really if you try to do what you can. To, if you can do something to solve a problem, then that. Whereas we cannot do something, then it doesn't have to worry about that. But to be able to do that, if you're able to transform your mind, then as you have less fear and anxiety, because if you're too nervous, too anxious about it, then you won't be able to do anything. Anything kind of, uh, you know, you're always worried. Once you're able to transform your mind, then you can tackle, do whatever necessary to do. Is that clear? In fact, the poet John Milton said in his Paradise Lost, he said, mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell and hell of heaven. Shakespeare said also, said, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. How you interpret? Main thing is about a perception, transforming a perception. Perception. You understand? The great master Padmasambhava, or Guru Mbache, precious master, Tibetan calls him affectionately, who brought the teaching of Buddha to Tibet, and who is the author of the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and the teaching on the pardos, uh, which are teaching on life and death, the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, in the line of Padmasambhava's teachings. He said the main thing for this life 
we have to do in this life to keep it very simple. The main thing in this life is to work with the mind, to purify our perception, to realize the essence of mind, nature of mind and compassion. Because as Dalai Lama, uh, I think once quoted in, um, in Zurich, in year 2005, he was quoting the founder of the cognitive therapy, who said that, you see, when you, for example, like have anger, or one strong negative emotion, or emotion often that really stains 90% of your perception is stained by anger. Only 10% you see reality. Basically, 90% projection. And 10% reality. Do you understand? So, seeing is not believing. What you're seeing is only your projection. That's why we need to purify mind. In the highest Buddhist philosophy, or on the practice, is the principle what is called shunyata, great emptiness. The emptiness is not nothingness. But rather, what does emptiness mean? Empty of concepts. Empty the projection. So that you begin to see things more. You may see more reality. You understand? So through practice of meditation, nature mind, mind is more purified of its projection. You begin to see things clearly. And as you see more clearly, there's less afflicting emotions. Because sometimes emotions are very entangled. We are so much caught up in emotions. And it makes us very much suffer. But once you become more clear, once you become more controlled, more understand our emotions, emotions can still arise. But we no longer swear by them. We no longer are subject to that. Rather, we can understand the emotions with more compassion and transform it and realize it. It's workable. It's not impossible. Mind is very workable, La mente es muy maleable. really. And then mind can be very pliable. If you know, if you train, si te entrenas, if you work, señor. mind can be very pliable. La mente puede ser muy maleable. Pliable means maleable. it's decir? like it's really flexible, que es not hard, no está dura. not rigid, no está rígida, but pliable, sino maleable. like a dough, Como un... dough, dough, you know? Like uh, if you make, uh, you know, with a flour, a dough. Ah, la masa, la masa. La, la, you la, 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 can do, la, 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 la. Mind becomes very pliable. La mente se vuelve muy maleable. Pliable. But all the key Pero toda esta la, lies in la clave understanding the essence of mind. La clave de esto ya en el Coming de to actually to arrive at the more the ground of mind. I mean, you might say, how can we just arrive like that? By coming to the ground of mind. A way of, you can say, either you can say arriving at the ground of mind, or more transcending the mind, like going through the clouds, and then going beyond the clouds, and discovering scala, you know? You can say other grounding in a, a, a setting in a, in a natural great peace or transcending the mind. You see? When you transcend the mind, go beyond the thoughts, emotions, then you become like a really, you find the ground. 
you find the ground, la base. and in that when you find the ground, la base, then you begin to realize, you see, very much a sense of being. You discover, you connect with your fundamental being, and you really connect with yourself in a deep way, beyond the ego self, your true self, and there you discover tremendous goodness, goodness, there's tremendous love, there's tremendous compassion, there's infinite wisdom, infinite compassion, which is the nature. Like, for example, when the cloud, sky is free of clouds, then you reveal the scarlet nature of your mind. And then from there, the, the great sun of a true nature shines forth. Or can say of a Buddha nature shines forth. That the sun has what? Tremendous light. Light is the wisdom. And the warmth is the love and compassion. Do you understand? Very much like that. Very much within ourselves. Also, this French philosopher Pascal once said, he said, all of men's difficulties, I mean, those days people said always men's difficult, men. Everything is man, mankind. But now, of course, it's more. Mankind is not so, you know, politically not correct. It's humanity. So all of men, that means also women's difficulties. This I think is very profound. All of men, that means also women's difficulties, are caused by his or her inability to sit quietly in a room by himself. We don't know how to just simply be. In fact, I found that very profound. Because trouble is because the inability to sit quietly in a room by himself. We don't know how to be with ourselves. We are not in touch with ourselves. We don't know how to be. Hence we've lost the contentment and the peace. If you really know, if you really are able to sit quietly in the room by yourself and really especially connect with your true nature, keep the company, it's the most wonderful. It's like when you really rest in meditation, which is, what is meditation? It's a process of coming to know one's mind. So through meditation, what it reveals us is the ground of your true nature, scarlet nature of mind. When you come into touch with that, there's an incredible release, incredible spaciousness and freedom. You connect with yourself. I think greatest discovery Dalai Lama said, we traveled millions of millions of billions of miles to travel to the stars, but we not traveled here, no? this. When you really are able to discover that and be in the company of your true nature, where you connect with yourself, and then you also you connect with others. One becomes friend with yourself. All the negativity is diffused. It's the greatest uh, disarmament, inner disarmament. And also charity truly beginning at home. You, when you become that, 
then from out of that you contact with your fundamental goodness, then kindness, good heart, kindness, compassion, love, wisdom, eminent. And then really, that's the source of happiness. That's the way to be happy.